Hey, how you doing? My name is Emilio. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We're gonna to be looking at a home tech lab in this video. So uh, if you yourself are in technology, you work in technology or you're wanting to learn more, one of the best things that you could do uh, to help with your learning is to set up your own home lab. Now we're gonna look at what could you be building? Um, specifically, we're gonna be looking at a larger home lab versus a smaller home lab, and which ones may be better than the other. We're gonna look at the pros and cons of each of these two. Before we do get into that, please remember, as always, to subscribe to my channel by clicking on that button right below there, clicking on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Now, one more thing, if you wanna learn more about technology, as I said, you're starting out or you're already in IT and you're wanting to learn more, do check out my show notes, my description down the bottom because I do have a number of training courses, full length hours of content that you may find helpful. One specifically all around IT administration, around servers and networking, giving you a good overview, summary of all of that, and others around Mac OS and even around VMware and Server 2019. So do check out those if you do wanna learn a lot more. All right, so you're watching this because you wanna know how do I even get started in building a lab? Is a bigger lab better than a smaller lab? Like what sort of equipment should I be buying to be able to build my lab? The great thing is just to get started, all you really need is some equipment. If you've got some spare computers, if you've got a spare router, a spare switch at home, that's generally enough to at least get started on the basics. But if you wanna build more things, then you're gonna need more equipment. The more equipment you've got, the more powerful the equipment is, the more you can actually build. Now right here, I've got myself a server rack. This is a cabinet. This is something similar to what you may find in a business. In a business, they come in these sizes, they come in much bigger sizes. You may have a lot of these in a, in a corporate environment because you're gonna be running a lot more infrastructure because you're creating, a, you're providing a service to staff out in a business. You may need to invest in something like this if you want something that is a little bit larger and then you fill it with the relevant equipment within. Now, of course, the benefits of having something that is large like this is that you're gonna be able to build a larger lab environment. So in my case, we're gonna look at the specifics in a second, but you'll see that I've got some servers, I've got a NAS or a SAN, and I've got some more corporate-based switches as well, gigabit switches that allow me to run more devices into them. Now the great thing about this is that generally servers, these rack-based servers, are a lot more powerful than your standard desktop or laptop computer, which means you can actually build more things and you know, essentially build more virtual servers, uh, more technologies when you have something that's a little bit more powerful. So a larger, you can build more. A smaller, you can build less. A smaller is smaller, it's more compact, it's neater. A larger, you're gonna need something that's a little bit bigger than this. Now in my case, as I said, I've got a server cabinet. So I've actually gone and bought myself this rack. I spent uh, $150 on it, so it wasn't too much, it was secondhand, but that's always a good way to get started. You can, of course, go and build your own similar unit. There's a whole bunch of people online who have built their own server racks. I've even seen people that have gone down to Ikea and bought themselves some tables from Ikea and built their own server lab that way. But of course, having something that is already pre-built is so much easier. It's got all the, you know, all, all the rails already built in so I can easily just rack equipment right in there. But you don't need something this fancy. I just like to have it all in the one spot and then that way I can actually rack and rail my servers and my storage and my switches directly into the rack itself. Now, of course, the other thing is when you're looking at a larger environment such as this, is that it probably will require you to spend a little bit of money. Many people won't have equipment like this laying around. You're not gonna have a, a server or perhaps a switch like this laying around. You may have equipment that is more catered to a home environment. So what I've done is I just went online, checked out some secondhand online stores, and I've bought myself some equipment right here. I did have to spend a little bit of money to even get started, but it's worth it if you wanna become a little bit more understanding of this sort of equipment because a lab generally will give you some understanding and some learning so that you can then put those practices in place 
in a real life company, in a real life business. And of course, in a company, you're not gonna be setting up smaller computers for a server environment, for a, you know, for a, a corporate environment. You're gonna be using things such as rack-based servers, blade servers, switches that you can mount, etc. So it's a little bit more real life. But of course, it's bigger, it's more cumbersome, and the one big thing is that it's noisier and runs a lot hotter. This stuff is noisy when you power it on. I mean, right now, you can't hear it because it's all powered off, but all of these devices have got big fans inside of them, multiple fans inside of them, and they run a lot hotter, which also means that you need to cool this stuff down with the fans, but also electricity. You're gonna be using a lot more power in your, let's say you're running this at home or even in a work lab environment. Um, it's gonna be a lot hotter, which means it's gonna need a lot more electricity to be able to actually keep the stuff cool, but also give the processing power that it needs to be able to run everything in here. So let's now just look a little bit more detailed at the equipment that I've got in here and sort of show you um, what uh, maybe some ideas around a larger sort of lab environment. So these are called managed switches. Uh, other switches are just gonna be called unmanaged switches. So at your home five or eight port switch is gonna be an unmanaged switch. And essentially it's more of a dumb switch is what they call it. It's not very smart. These ones are managed switches. So you can actually log into an interface into these and actually control the actual ports themselves. You can control the port speeds, uh, you can control what sort of VLAN they're a member of, etc. So the good thing about these is you can actually split up perhaps the, the VLAN or the actual network that these ports are part of. So you could have one side of your switch doing one particular function, perhaps servicing your servers, the other half servicing some PC, some Windows, some Linux, some Mac computers, and they're all running on different networks. You can actually go and split up this very, very easily. The reason I've got two is because I want to have some form of redundancy and high availability. When I've got all my servers down the very bottom, uh, I have these running into each of these two switches so that in the event that one switch fails, the other switch can pick up that load and my server traffic does not actually get affected too much anyway. On the left here, I've got tucked away a smaller desktop. Now this desktop uh, is just there because I had a spare desktop, but I've also got a standard desktop set up in here with some Windows Server 2019 software running onto it. Um, and that's just really servicing as a second domain controller. So a domain controller, of course, has Active Directory, you've got DNS, and that's what that is actually servicing. Down the very bottom, we've got all the server and the storage technology. So I've got three Dell servers. Now, I picked these up super, super cheap. Now, they are cheap because they are fairly old, but they still are able to run the virtualization technology that I want to run onto these. So these three are all running VMware's ESXi, uh, and it works actually really, really well. They are Xeon processors. They're pumped full of uh, RAM as well, so I can easily allocate these to specific virtual machines uh, very, very easily and actually slice that, slice up the, um, the resources within these across those VMs. Now, they are older and it's only because I wanted something that was very, very cheap and that was what was available to me. But of course, if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, hundreds, if not maybe a few thousand dollars, you can pick up yourself much better quality servers. Down the very bottom is what's called a NAS, a network attached storage. So you can have a NAS or a SAN, which is a storage attached network. And essentially it's just a device with a whole bunch of disks that are then available and distributed across your network. So all of these servers, you can have virtual machines running on them, but the, the actual storage of those virtual machines is sitting within the NAS or the SAN itself. Now, if you do want to know a little bit more around a NAS or a SAN and the differences between those two, do check out one of my other videos that you'll see at the top there that goes into a little bit more detail. But I chose to have this because this is where all of my storage is living. It's all in one central location. All my data, all my VMs are all sitting on there. Now, of course, my servers themselves do have hard drives within them, but I wanted something that was more dedicated, which is why I've opted to have this NAS as well. Now, you don't have to spend a lot of money to 
pick up equipment like this. As I said, the rack itself was probably the more expensive unit. That cost me about $150 Australian, which is around, let's say, $110, $120 uh, American, US dollars. Our switches, uh, this particular Cisco switch was just over $50. Each of the servers, well, I actually picked up all three servers and the switch on the top for $80, which is super, super cheap. Somebody was selling them, they had it in their own lab, and I picked them up very cheap, 80 bucks for all four units, which was excellent. Now this particular NAS itself, I did pick it up uh, secondhand from a place that I used to work, so that was a nice little benefit to me, but you could pick something up like this for a little bit, a little bit more, maybe 100, 100, 200 dollars, uh, depending on the model of the NAS. This is a Synology NAS and it is actually empty, so it doesn't have any discs in it. So you'll have to go and buy yourself some discs. You pull them out like that, and then you insert the hard drives into there. These can be either SATA or SAS-based hard drives, depending on the model of the NAS or the SAN that you're planning to use. But as I said, you don't even have to use a NAS or a SAN. You could just use the storage that is built right into your servers themselves if you so choose to. That's one of the benefits of the larger environment. Now you may choose to invest in something like this. You can get more equipment that you can store into here, but that's just something to get you started. And here's an example of a small lab. So I've just got a small little cabinet with some equipment there on the left. So I've got a few little computers along with a switch and some storage that is all connected on my network. And it's a lot neater it's a lot more compact than the larger so we've got ourselves a small mac mini on the left hand side and a small intel NUC on the right hand side both of these are configured with what's called vmware's esxi essentially running in a virtualization environment and as you can see it's a lot smaller than a full-size rack or even a blade server that needs to be put inside of a cabinet and the reason I've done this is because I wanted to have these inside of my studio as opposed to in my separate rack in a different space in my house, for example. And it's smaller, it's more compact, it looks neater. But of course, the flip side is that it's, of course, not as powerful as what you will find in the rack itself. So you're not going to get as much grunt, as much CPU, as much RAM, as much hard drive space as you will on a larger version, but this is another good option for you to get started, especially if you're comparing a large versus a small. The small, very compact, very neat, can really be sitting anywhere. Uh, you could sit it even inside of a closet, inside of a cupboard, uh, and it, it's, you know, it's, it's not an ob obstructive sort of um, setup. Uh, it's definitely a lot cleaner. So because I like it to be compact, that's why I'm using these two. Now the Mac mini I did already have, I had it as an older Mac computer, so I was able to repurpose it. The Intel NUC, however, I did buy it because I wanted a small form factor computer that I could literally install my own RAM, my own, my own hard drive into it. It's got an Intel Core i7 in there, and that Mac mini is obviously running an older Intel uh, processor as well, but it just makes it very easy and it's very, very cheap. It's a lot cheaper than investing in the larger equipment. I've also got a smaller Synology NAS. You'll remember that from the uh, larger setup, we had a rack-based Synology NAS. This, of course, is a smaller one, just containing four disks as opposed to a lot more disks in the other one. I did go out and buy this. It is a little bit expensive, but getting a NAS just makes it really, really easy to be able to store all of my data, any of my virtual machines that I'm building, they're all stored on here and it's all in the one single location. On the right, you see there's little LEDs for each of the disks, the four disks, as well as a USB. And on the back, you've got dual ethernet, you've got all of the stuff to make sure that you can keep the thing up and running. But I would recommend investing in one of these. You don't need to, you can just use the storage within a computer that you may already have, but I recommend getting one because it just makes it easier to store all your data in one spot. And then of course, the beauty of a smaller home lab is that you can use old computers. So I've got myself an old Dell, an old Lenovo laptop and a desktop uh, that I wasn't using for anything, had them laying around, but you can repurpose those and set them up in a home lab 
and they are also running VMware's ESXi. So all in all, I've got four VMware hosts all running within this smaller lab environment. It's a lot more compact and a lot more neat. Now, of course, I could put all of this stuff a lot more together, but I've chosen to sort of have them in their own little space just because I like the look of it. But you can, of course, decorate it and set it up the way that you want. So there is the example of the small home lab. So which way will you go? You're gonna go for something larger like this and actually spend a little bit of money and get yourself something that's a little bit more enterprisey, or you're gonna go down the smaller route where you can use some old equipment. You could even buy yourself a little Mac mini, what I've got there, or a, live, or a little Intel NUC. They're brilliant, they're small, they're compact, and it just makes a much smaller, neater environment as well. So there's these two options. Why don't you let me know in the comments below what you want to do. Uh, maybe you're going for a larger one, maybe you're going for a smaller one, maybe you're not sure and you wanna ask me some further questions, feel free to let me know in those comments. And look, if you did find this video helpful, if you find any of my videos helpful, please do also like them. And as always, please do remember to subscribe, clicking on that button and on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. And do check out some of my other videos if you want to learn about more things around all things tech.